Hey everybody, guess what today? Well, guess what I'm gonna do today? I'm about to change the oil on this 2017 GMC Yukon. I haven't been driving it in a while. I've been driving this one right here, my 07. Um, changed the oil on this one already, did a video on it. Yes, indeed, I did a little video on this one. But um, we're not talking about this one today. We're talking about this one. 2017 GMC Yukon. About to change this oil. So let me get started here. Gotta take this top off first. Got to keep it covered up a little bit. The kids scratch it up when they riding their bikes and stuff. By you know, they don't care. They just scratch them on up. Unlock it real quick. I'm just unlocking it so I can just pop the hood on it and take the arm cap off of it and the dipstick. Oh, little bugs got on up under there. I guess they wanted to take a nap. So who knows? Well, let me get the, get this started real quick. Pop this hood. Where you at? Where you at, hood pop? It's in here somewhere. I'm gonna take this cap off right here. Hold on, let me go get my thingy, man, because I'm kind of short. Here we go. Here's use this. Whoa. First, we're going to take this off, the oil fill cap, sit it to the side, and pull the dipstick up a little. There we go. Now for the fun part. All you need is your trusty 15 millimeter socket and your ratchet. Let me set, set her up under here so you guys can see. Turn a little light on for you real quick. Hope that's enough light for you. Should be. Let me see if I can set it up for you. Where you at? Oh, bugs out here. Can I get in my ear? Okay. Filters right here. To feel good fish. Let me see if I got the right angle. The filter is right here, guys. This blue thing right here, yes. And a bolt to take it loose. This is a couple of inches away from the filter. Now, 
It's a 15 millimeter. You see, oh, and it's plus I have two separate pans. I got one for the filter here, a little open pan, and this one right here is for the oil flow. I like this one because it has the, um, the thing you know, you can drain it real easy without spilling. But um, the hard part is going to be getting the oil to go in there without spilling on the ground. But I'm in the dirt part of my yard, so that should help out a little bit. Let's get this shoe on the road. I had already loosened up a little bit. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm knocking stuff over around here. <sighs> Who told that thing to get in my way like that? I'm gonna angle this way a little bit cause uh, my arms is just going wild. It's knocking stuff everywhere. Okay. Let me see right here. Yes, you can see it. All right, now we're gonna loosen this up. <coughs> Let me get this a little closer sore. We can have minimum spillage on the ground. Here we go. Here we go, y'all. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. Woo! Oh, yeah. She's a little dirty. She's a little dirty, dirty. It's okay, though. We're going to clean her up. Can't be riding your show like that, man, with that dirty oil like that. You want her to be looking good. Riding good, you want that motor to be nice and smooth. You don't want to hit on ticking. Hit that ticking, something ain't right, baby. Keep that oil changed every six months or every so many thousand miles. I don't forget how many thousand miles. Check your um check your driver's manual, your auto manual, and um it should tell you. But most people do it twice a year, every six months. And that's what I do every six months. I don't do a lot of driving, so. I don't really have to change mine every six months, but I like to keep it looking nice and clean. You don't want no dirty oil. And this this vehicle right here, my uh, my other truck, my, my other Tahoe, well actually Yukon, I mean, takes six quarts of oil. This one right here takes Almost nine quarts. Could you believe that? And this oil right here is a little th um, thicker. It's, um, SAE 10W30. And the, the, what goes in here is SAE 0W20. And uh, yes, it takes a whole lot of motor, motor oil to fill this truck up right here. And with the prices of gas going up, that's, that's another thing right there. Let me wipe my boat off while um, I think it's draining. My vehicle's still up under warranty, but I'm not about to pay them to change my oil. I can do it myself. Why, why pay the dealership all this money to change my oil for me when I can do it myself? I keep all my receipts so they try to so if anything happened, they won't they they won't be trying to say that I haven't been keeping my maintenance up on my vehicle. They're supposed to be changing the law where they can't tell you what you can't do to your car and it won't be under warranty anymore because they're trying their best to get you not to be able to work on your own vehicle. And um if you do work on it, they'll say, well, it's not under warranty anymore because of this or that. If you touch this, you took a boat out of here and put a new boat in. So that's what they say. But I'm changing my own stuff myself. Everything that goes wrong with it, I'm going to do it myself. That way I know what's in here and that it's actually it's been done. So I'm just drip slow down a real real good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, 
take the filter off because I don't want to, um, it's not enough room for me to take the filter off and let this thing drain at the same time because on the other vehicle, my other truck, the oil drain is on that side over there so I can have this over there and draining the uh, filter with the oil at the same time. But on here, they have, have everything is bam, right here. It's kind of convenient, but man, you got to wait to do whatever else you want to do. <coughs> I'm going to start doing me an undercoating for this thing. I don't drive it in the winter anyway. It's a 4x4 four four that doesn't get driven in the winter. Hmm. Am I backwards for doing that? I don't know. Probably so. I don't want to rust out. I'm in the Rust Belt, Ohio. I'm up here in Cleveland, you know. And um, I don't want my car all rust up. No sorry. This truck runs and drives so smooth. I put the three inch lift on the front. You know, a lot of people think that it doesn't ride smooth. When people put lift the front in front of their vehicle up or lift their vehicle up, period. If you don't do it right, of course you're gonna get a bumpy ride. Putting knuckles and stuff in between your springs to lift your vehicle up, yeah, it's gonna ride rough because you got something jammed in between your your springs or your struts trying to lift the vehicle up. I had a, a box Chevy. I did that too. I, um, when I first was trying to learn how to work on cars, and I wanted my car lifted up, and um, I put air shocks on the back and the front. I put those um, spacer things in the, between the springs. And man, I was, I was riding on the street, bouncing all over the road and everything. But now, I know how to do everything the right way. With the right lifts, and it still give you that factory ride once you do it the right way. Because right now, I got that factory ride. It's like I'm on, even with my 07, I put a lift on that one too. I lift the front and the back of that one up. On this one, I just did the front. And um, man, they rise, they rise like I'm on air, man. I think I got a tough country lift on mine. I think I don't know which one is on this one. One of them got tough country, one of them got something else. Okay, it's time to take this filter off now. It's got a little drip going. Put a drip drip. Ooh, I got a lot of oil in this thing, man. I'm gonna slide you on over here to wait for a minute, partner. Cause I need to um I need to I need to slide him over here so I can get this um filter off. Cause um some light over there. Right there, there we go. Now let's, let's slide you up a little bit more, partner. I want him directly up under there so I get this filter off. So now, uh, let me take it off my hand. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. See, guys, what I'm saying? Your filter doesn't have to be tightened up with anything. You should better just hand tighten it, and that should be enough where it won't leak. You don't want to smash the seals or anything on your filter. That's why you should um, hand tighten it. <coughs> Ew, look at that. Come on up out of there. Come on up out of there, baby boy. Look at him, look at him go. Look at him go. Come on, get up. Uh, I'm gonna leak on my cardboard. It's the only piece I got left. I'm gonna use this to lay on. I'm gonna have to get up under the car. There we go. There we go. Woo! Come on up out of there. Get that dirty oil up out of there. Get on up out of there. Once everything stopped, put my screw back in, put the new filter on, and fill it up with the oil. And I'm good to go. You heard me?
Wipe all that muck from around there, you know what I'm saying? Wipe all that stuff from around there. Let it go ahead and get the drip, drip, drip. Matter of fact, I got enough room to slide this over and get this right here under there too, because I don't want the dog to be licking this oil, man, my little puppy, you know. I don't want to hurt my puppy. That'd be a sad day for America. Hurt my puppy. Oh yeah, guys. I, I I um I ordered me a um one of those bushman suits. They're not really bushman suits. They're really hunting suits you use when you go hunting out in the woods. And um anyway, I'm I ordered one. Like I said, this right here is a um my channel is gonna be about some of everything. I try to do like how to do stuff on here, and I'm gonna do pranks too. So I'm um, I'm gonna do the Cleveland Bushman. Yes, try to scare people jumping up out of the bushes on them. I got it today. I tried it on. I'm going to sew some more stuff on it, onto it. Because you can see, actually see some of the material things. And uh, I don't want to show that. I want to see that one. I want to be able to use it when it's more light outside. I don't know when I'm gonna do my first prank with the suit, but I gotta. Uh, I'm gonna go in the house tonight, and so and I got off work today. You know, I worked out like I usually do. I didn't, I didn't video record it, cause it's one of my repeat videos. I mean, you know, it's like a, it's already on my channel. What uh, one of my chest exercises I did. Um, so I didn't record. I just worked out, and then I just got up under here, filming this right here. Now, you see that the oil has stopped running out of the truck. Now, all you do is you, put, you wipe the boat off. You wipe this off. Like I did, wipe everything off. You put the boat back in there. You tighten this up real good. And that filter, when you put it back on, you just hand tighten as hard as you can. And, um, and you replace the oil. When you put the oil back in, after you put it out, Put about this, like I said, this one take like eight to nine quarts. I like to put about, I say put about six in, check it. And every quart you put in, check it again. To make sure, look at your dipstick and see where you are before you keep adding oil. Don't just pile oil up in there because the thing says to. So always check your oil if you get so many quarts in there. If you got, like my other truck takes six quarts, after I put about five in there, I check it to make sure. And when you put in your, before you put your filter back on, get some of your clean oil, wipe around the top of the filter. It's a rubber thing on the top of your filter. You wipe around that. And um, and also you can add some oil, like at least a quarter oil inside the filter, put it back in there and turn it, tighten it on up. And then once you got everything under here tight and bolted up, you go up top, you fill it back up to where you're supposed to be filled up. And you're good to go. You start it up and you check for um, leaks and you're good to go. And that's how you change the oil in your 2017 GMC Yukon. See ya.